Hi. Video is going to be slightly different. You know, I've just had a lot on my mind what's been happening in the tech industry the past couple of weeks. It's just been crazy. Phones left, right and center. You've had LG announcing stuff. You've had Samsung announcing stuff. You've had Apple finally announcing their flagship phones, the iPhone 10, which we've all been looking forward to. And the main thing that's just been bugging my mind throughout the whole week as I've been talking to people, people have been asking me, you know, LOT, Ben, is the iPhone worth it for £999, $1,000? Is the Galaxy Note 8 worth the price that it's at, you know, like, why are they so expensive? Like, no one's going to buy that. And just a lot of things just kept going through my mind about why are smartphone manufacturers just making their phones so expensive, even if they are the cream of the crop? What's the reason? Like, it wasn't like that not that long ago. So how is it in the space of a year, prices of these phones have just decided to, you know, just skyrocket like no man's business, you know, like we're made of money somehow, you know, we're just gonna pay for it. It looks like that might just be the case for several reasons because I've seen a lot of people make rant videos about, you know, why Apple's not including fast charging out of the box because you have to spend an extra $84 or 70 pounds and why the iPhone is copying Samsung and it's just a ripoff because it's just a thousand pounds too expensive. The note shouldn't be charged that much because of what happened last year. Samsung need to make it much of a cheaper price and it's just not worth the 870 pounds or 950 dollars that you know they're charging for it and I agree. I do agree. You know I can't disagree one bit because these phones are just way too expensive now. They're like if you saw my original OnePlus 5 review, which I will have linked up here, so please do go watch it. I critiqued that phone saying that it was too expensive for what it was going to do. And I take it back. I really, really, really do take it back. I take it back just for the fact that that phone in the UK, the 8 gig RAM model that you would want to get, the one that has that blistering performance with the amazing Oxygen OS speed and optimization that OnePlus seem to be praising. It's 500, you know, 500 pounds, 500 pounds. Are you getting double the phone for a thousand pounds with the iPhone 10? Yes, I do understand the totality of all the things that come with these flagship phones, but even with the Note 8, as much as I love that phone with all the things it does with the S Pen, the Iris Scanner, the amazing display, the IP68, Am I getting double the phone? And I really do take it back. You know, double the price. OnePlus seemed very justified with how they priced that phone. But again, without digressing, what is the reason why these flagship manufacturers have been able to charge such extortionate prices? And psychologically, I thought about it and I decided to pin it down to this. Necessity and desirability. Necessity and desire. And let me just explain it how it goes. Necessity. Necessity is just basically not being able to live without something because it is a part of your life. It's not something you can just decide to leave out the way because you feel like, oh, I can go without it. And I realized this, that it was coming from a necessity standpoint, just based on a question I asked one of my colleagues, I asked them, the iPhone 10 is a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds is a lot of money. He said that a thousand pounds I can buy a laptop. Yeah, you can. You can buy a laptop. Like you can actually buy a very good laptop. But I said to him, could you see yourself carrying your laptop with you every single day as you go? And he replied, no. But your phone, could you imagine leaving your phone at home? The reaction was like, no, I could never ever leave my phone at home. It just just the reality of it couldn't necessity these smartphones have just become such a necessity in our lives that we depend on them to pretty much do everything you know online banking shopping email communication with our family these smartphones we almost take them for granted just based on the fact that they've become power pcs in our pocket you know, they're moving so fast in what they can do. You've got Samsung leveraging the power of their new phones in DeX. 
Apple finally releasing the AR platform, leveraging the power that's inside their phones, the videography capabilities. There's just so many things that these phones can do that we depend on them every single day as a way of necessity and a way of life that we couldn't actually live without them. It's now become a necessity. And I think these smartphone manufacturers, they understand the psychology of how much we depend on these phones. Next is desirability, desire. I think we as human beings, we desire having the best of the best to the point where these smartphones have actually become like what supercars are, a dream, a statement of symbol, something that feels really desirable and something that is, you know, a symbol of statement when you have, like you feel proud of it, you've invested in it. You know, it's something that, you know, touches the intangible side of you that you just can't really put a price tag on. Well, in this case, you seem to like can based on the price tag of these products, but you desire it, you want it. There's, there's, there's the, you know, human chemicals in your body that makes you feel excited that you've invested in all these new products, especially when it's by brands that you love that carry that symbol of premium or, you know, upper classness or whatever you want to call it. Now, I personally think these smartphone manufacturers have really understood the psychology of us having a necessity to these products and having the desire of these products, the anticipation, the hype, all the things that go into the buildup of wanting these phones and how it makes you feel when you have it and how much you depend on it to work every single day. And that's why I think for them, they feel justified. Yes, there's many things. These smartphones have advanced to a point where they are so powerful. We're able to use it to replace all the other things that we needed to do, especially on the desktop. And it's amazing. And, you know, for someone like me that loves technology, you know, it's in the name, lover of tech, I can't help but to get excited when I see these products. But at the same time, I can't help but feel that these products are just way too expensive. And I think the only way it's going to slow down is if we come to the realization that the world that we live in now, especially in 2017, there are great alternatives that we can try that actually really speaks value but without a compromise of experience. But we're scared sometimes, you know, we, we can be stuck in our ways where we like what we like. We trust what we trust. And even in a day and age where technology is so good, where there's actually no fault, and even us reviewers were struggling to critique all these products to the point where it's almost like we're bashing them. And we're not actually applauding the fact that technology has come to a place where everything just works seamlessly well. And it's almost impossible to make a bad choice, whether you go with Sony, whether you go with Xiaomi, whether you go with LG, whether you go with whatever company, OnePlus, or the tried and tested samsung and apple you can't go wrong you almost cannot go wrong but because they know we buy into their products the marketing the hype the ooze of what these products give you when you hold it they're fed into that anticipation you know they're fed into the anticipation that it's 10 years of iphone or it's a return of the galaxy note or it's whatever next big deal or the future of the smartphone the revolutionary they fed into your necessity and your desire to actually buy these products, not being able to live without them, and also desiring to have the best of what's coming out. And they've actually capitalized. And unless we actually diffuse it, I don't see this slowing down. But at the same time, it not slowing down worries me because where is the limit? How far is this gonna go until it just becomes too much where you literally have to sell your organs or sell your wife? or sell your kids, to be able to afford to have these products, to be able to enjoy it. And that almost just worries me. Anyway, let me just conclude this. This is just my one opinion. I've seen lots of videos out there. I've come bashing Apple, bashing Samsung, applauding Apple, applauding Samsung. So many different sides of the coin, but I just wanted to take a different twist to it and just try and make you understand the, the, the psychology behind it. You know, the thinking behind it, the marketing, the strategic ways that these smartphone companies, especially when it comes to their flagship devices, have really decided to push things beyond the limit. 
there's ways that we can get around this and we need to not be scared to try something new that really gives us value. But at the end of the day, me saying that, I'm still gonna order my iPhone 8 Plus, my iPhone 10. I already have a Galaxy Note 8. So what does that say about me as a consumer? Anyway, I'm gone. Subscribe. Please subscribe. It's free. It's not gonna cost you anything and I would really appreciate it. Thank you. And you guys are all awesome.